In this video, we have a look at how to deseasonalize time series data. So in the first instance, we've got our table of data, which is based on parcel deliveries through Monday, Wednesday, and Friday of each week. To make analysis of the time series data easier, what we'll do is we'll put two numerical columns of data. We'll keep the scores, but we'll also introduce a time column which is based on days of the week, but expressed purely numerically. So for example, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday of the first week are represented by t equals one, two, and three. It makes data entry easier when we don't have to worry about the days and specific dates. Now as for what deseasonalized data means, it's probably easiest to have a look at the graph of the scores that we have in our table. Now if we have a look at our data, we can see that there's a cyclical pattern we know that the first score of the week, in other words, the Monday is always a high score, and then the next two days, Wednesday and Friday, are lower. So is there a way to actually make a valid comparison? We can see here the first Monday achieved a score of 12 parcels, and then 14 in the second week, and 16 in the third week. But were they actually good performances? We know that Monday is always going to be higher. We can see here the lower scores for Wednesday and Friday. Is there a way to deseasonalize? In other words, remove the fact that it was a Monday, Wednesday, or Friday, and just make a comparison. In effect, bring these scores to the same scale as indicated by the arrows. Well, there is, and it's a process called deseasonalizing. In this case, it's not so much seasons, but days of the week. And so we need to go through a process that allows us to do that for all the scores. Let's have a look at the table of data that we've got. And what we'll do is we'll split them up into each of the weeks. So we can see here that the first week, the average for those scores was 9. That's the average of 12, 7, and 8. Then we go into the next week, and the average of 14, 9, and 9 was 10.67. So we can see that we've got rising number of parcels from the first week to the second week. Unfortunately, the third week's incomplete, so we can't work out an average for that particular week. Now what we can do is say, okay, so what percentage is Monday of that average? We know it exceeds it, but by how much? How much is expected that Wednesday and Friday are below that average? So what we'll do is we'll calculate a percentage of the weekly average for each day of the week as we proceed through week one and week two. So our first calculation is based on Monday of week one we want to work out what is 12 as a percentage of the average for that week, which is 9. And we can see the calculation underneath the table here. 12 as a percentage of 9 comes to 133.33 to two decimal places as a percentage. We'll repeat the process now for Wednesday. So that's 7 out of 9 as a percentage. And that comes to 77.78, again rounded off to two decimal places. Our final calculation for week 1 is 8 out of 9 and that comes to 88.89%. So we can see we've got percentages of the average for Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And that quickly tells us that Monday is 133.33% of the average, in other words, well above, and Wednesday and Friday are slightly below. We can repeat that for week two, and then what we can do is see if we get an overall pattern for how much are Mondays above, and how much are Wednesdays and Fridays below. It's suggested that you pause here, check your own calculations for the percentages for week two, and see if you agree with our results. So in this particular table, we've only got two cycles or two weeks to work with. Normally there might be three or four more, so you get a, a much greater sense of an average of how much Monday is above and Wednesday and Friday are below. But in this case, since we've only got two to work with, let's have a look at typically how much is Monday above the weekly average. So what we'll do is we'll have a look at the Monday percentages and work out their average result. That's the average of 133.33 and 131.25. We'll add them together, divide by two, and we can see here that we get a percentage of 132.29. So whilst this is only based on two Mondays, what it tells us is that typically Monday will be 132.29% of the weekly average. Let's have a look now at Wednesdays and Fridays and see how they compare. So Wednesdays, the average is 81.08% based on the two figures we can see here in red for week one and week two. 
So that means that typically Wednesdays are 81.08% of the weekly average. Fridays, the average comes to 86.63%. Again, that means that we can see from the scores in red that's based on the first week and second week. And typically Fridays are 86.63% of the weekly average. We call those figures seasonal indices. And we can also express them as just numbers or ratios rather than percentages. We can see here we've got a summary of those seasonal indices for each day of the week when parcels arrive from Monday through to Friday. And they're expressed as percentages or just simply a ratio. Now if we wish to calculate the seasonally adjusted score, what we do is we take the actual score and divide it by the seasonal index. We can see here for the first Monday that 12 divided by the seasonal index for Monday, 1.3229, comes to 9.07. So that's the first seasonally adjusted score. For the next score in the table, which is 7 for the Wednesday of the first week, we divide that by the seasonal index for Wednesday, which is 0 0.8108. And that gives us a seasonally adjusted score of 8.63. For the first Friday, it's 8 divided by 0 0.8663, and we get a score of 9.23. So whilst we have a very small sample here, only two weeks of data of averages, we can say based on the seasonally adjusted scores for the first week that Friday was marginally better than Monday and Wednesday was slightly worse. In other words, it takes into account the days that we know where we're going to get low deliveries or high deliveries and tries to make a comparison. It's suggested that you pause here and see if you can calculate the seasonally adjusted scores for the second week, that's Monday the 8th through to Friday the 12th. Now that we've worked out the seasonally adjusted scores for the second week, we can do the same for the beginning of the third week. Admittedly we don't have averages, but we do have the seasonal indices which can apply to the whole table. So Monday of the third week, the seasonally adjusted score is going to be 16 divided by 1.3229. And for the final Wednesday, 10 divided by 0 0.8108. So that completes the seasonally adjusted scores for the whole table. Now that we've got all of the seasonally adjusted values, which is shown here in the column in red, we can place them on our original graph. Our seasonally adjusted values are shown in blue in this case. And we can see here that there's a slight dip in the smoothed out data. That's Friday of the second week. That tells us that parcel deliveries were down based on the overall trend. And if we look from left to right, we can see that overall trend is a gradual increase in the parcel deliveries from the beginning of the first week. We can use our seasonally adjusted values to create a trend line, which allows us to make predictions for future number of parcel deliveries in the coming weeks.